Hi, it's Mr. Reese from Malmesbury Science here, and I'm going to show you how to do the A-level practical, the investigation into how the resistance of a piece of metal wire changes with length or thickness, cross-sectional area. The wire that I'm going to be working with today is Constantin, and I have my wire here that's been connected to a meter rule. Now I'm going to be seeing how the resistance of the wire changes with length, but you can carry out the investigation to see how resistance changes with thickness or cross-sectional area as well. It's a bit more difficult because you have to change out the wire and you have to have various thicknesses or various gauges of wire. Now I've already built my basic circuit. I have my power supply here that's hooked up to the end of the wire by a crocodile clip right at the end of the meter rule. And then the other end of the meter rule I have a wire coming off and that's going to my ammeter in the middle here so I can record the current. To calculate resistance we're going to use Ohm's law, V equals IR, so to find resistance, we're going to take the PD across the wire and divide it by the current. The first thing we need to do is measure the diameter of the wire because we need to calculate the cross-sectional area. And so I'm going to be using a micrometer. We don't want to use a ruler because the resolution of that is going to be a millimeter and so it's not going to be good enough. Vernier caliper, again, tenths of millimeters, still not great. This, however, has a resolution of 0.01 millimeters, so a hundredth of a millimeter, far more precise. That's what we want. Now, if you haven't used a micrometer before, it's fairly easy. We have the main scale and as we turn the drum, we actually move the end of it, move it past the lines on the main scale. That tells us how many millimeters or halves of millimeters we've gone past. And then the little scale, it gives us hundredths of millimeters. So this 50 for every turn. So that means that if I go through one complete turn, I've gone through 50 and that takes me to 0.5 millimeters and so every full turn with this micrometer is half a millimeter. So because there might be some variation in thickness we want to measure the diameter at three different points and then average them. They should be similar but you always have to check. So you just open the micrometer up, put the wire in between, careful not to stretch it and then you want to close the micrometer but being careful not to compress it and that's why we have this ratchet on the end. If we use that to close it as soon as that starts clicking, that means that we now have the right thickness. If we twist it anymore, we're actually squashing the wire, so we're going to get an inaccurate result. So I can see that, that I haven't quite gone to half a millimeter. I haven't gone quite through a full turn. I've gone to, well, 45 plus another two. And so that means that my first thickness of the wire diameter is 0 0.47 millimeters. Let's check again somewhere else. Same again. Now this one is ever so slightly thinner at that end. That was actually 0 0.46 millimeters. So my three readings are 0 0.47, 0 0.47, and 0.46. Averaging those, that gives us a number between 0 0.46 and 0 0.47. It's gonna be 0 0.46 and another two thirds, but we can't give an average to a greater precision than the individual reading. So that means it's just gonna be 0 0.47 millimeters. Now, if you haven't used a multimeter before, make sure that you know how to use it because it does have fuses in. And if you send too high a current going through it, it can blow the fuse and then you have to replace them. You don't want to do that. You always put one cable into common down the bottom there. With this multimeter, you then have an option as to whether you put the other lead in the 10 amps DC socket or the voltmeter and milliamp socket. Uh, we can see there that it says 200 milliamps max. Now we don't really know what the resistance of this wire is, so we don't know what kind of currents we're going to get. And so we might blow the fuse as soon as we turn it on. So let's just actually keep it to the 10 amps for the time being, put it to that setting, and we wanna turn our power pack on, make sure that our output is set to a minimum. And I'm getting a minus number, it's not important, just means the leads are in the other way around. I'm gonna swap them around anyway. Now we do have a current flowing already, even with the output set at a minimum here, it's not gonna be exactly zero. And so that means that we could probably do with a bit of extra resistance in the circuit to bring the current down, because we don't want the current any higher than this, because otherwise it could heat up the wire. If the temperature rises, then that means that the resistivity is going to change as well. So I now have a variable resistor. I'm just gonna add that into my circuit as well. Now we have a much smaller current. That's what we want because we ideally want to measure the current of three sig figs to make sure that there's less uncertainty. So I've now put the top cable in the milliamp socket. And so that means now I can change my dial to the milliamp setting. I'm now on milliamps. In order to reduce uncertainty, we can actually bring the resistance of this down 
and so we're actually increasing it a little bit more. Look at that, it's about 100 milliamps now. That's pretty good. So that's our current sorted, but now we need to measure our PD. Now there's two ways that you can do this. You can, if you want to, plug in the voltmeter in parallel with the whole circuit. So we could, if we wanted to, piggyback our leads onto the leads going onto the wire. And then we could move this crocodile clip down the wire to change the length of it. However, that is going to change the overall resistance of the circuit, and that's going to change the current, and so that means that there's going to be a slightly varying heating effect in the wire. That's not ideal. So the best thing to do is to piggyback one of these cables onto the back of the crocodile clip, and then what we can do is just take the other lead from our voltmeter and just attach it to the wire with its own crocodile clip. Now my lead is at 90 centimeters, and so it doesn't matter that we're not moving the cable at the end. With our voltmeter now, all we're measuring is the PD across 90 centimeters of the wire, not the whole length. But the current is going to be the same all the way down the wire, so that's fine. So let's turn our voltmeter on and see what kind of PDs we get. We're getting 0 0.3, and so that's a good thing about multimeters is that we can make them more sensitive, more precise. So let's go to millivolts instead. And sure enough, now that we're on millivolts, we do get a nice reading, and that's three significant figures, so that's nice and precise for us. You can start at a short length and go up to 100, so 10 to 100 in intervals of 10, or you can go downwards, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to take my first reading at 100 centimeters, so I want to pop that on there. And looking at my ammeter and my voltmeter, the PD at 100 centimeters is 75.0 millivolts, and my current is 26.9 milliamps. Now to find resistance, we do PD, voltage divided by current, according to Ohm's law, but they are in millivolts and milliamps, but it actually doesn't matter because they're both milli, and so that means that they're times 10 to the three, and so that actually just cancels. So if you're in millivolts and milliamps, you can just divide one number by the other. So now that I have my resistance for a meter length of the wire, I'm just going to move my voltmeter cable down 10 centimeters and take the readings again. Now I've gone down to 10 centimeters, here are all of my resistances for those lengths. What I can then do is draw a graph, and it should be a straight line graph that goes through the origin. We're going to put resistance on the y-axis and length on the x-axis. Now if we draw a line of s-fit and find the gradient, that gives us r over l. Now using this, we can find the resistivity of the wire and check it against the actual value. Now the gradient of my graph is 2.84. I can go to three sig figs because both my resistances and lengths are to three sig figs. Now the equation for resistivity is rho resistivity equals Ra over L, resistance times cross-sectional area divided by length. Now R over L is equal to the gradient of our graph. So all we have to do is replace that with our 2.84 and then times that by the cross-sectional area. How do we calculate cross-sectional area? Pi R squared, but because we've got the diameter, we're going to use pi D squared over four. Same thing. So we're going to take pi times that by 4.7 times 10 to the minus 4, because it has to be in meters. That was 0 0.47 millimeters. Square that and then divide by 4. That gives us a cross sectional area of 1.7 times 10 to the minus 7 meters squared. We can only go to two sig figs because our diameter was to only two sig figs. So then to find resistivity, we take our gradient of 2.84 times that by our cross-sectional area, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 7. And that gives us a resistivity of 4.8 times 10 to the minus 7 ohm meters. Now the accepted value for the resistivity of constant tan is 4.9 times 10 to the minus 7 ohm meters. And so we were very, very close. We can find the percentage error in our value by taking the difference, so that's just going to be 0 0.1 divided by the original 4.9 and times him by 100. And that's only a percentage error of 2%. The uncertainty in this experiment is fairly low so long as you measure your PDs and currents to three sig figs. The only real uncertainty is going to be in the cross-sectional area. Now the resolution of the micrometer was 0.01 millimeters. Now there is some debate as to whether the absolute uncertainty in our value for the diameter should be 0.01 or should be half that, half the resolution, because there shouldn't be any zero error. However, the exam boards have pretty much said that they'd be okay with either or. And erring on the side of caution, I'd say that the uncertainty is 0.01 millimeters. So the percentage uncertainty in our diameter is gonna be 0.01 divided by 0.47, or just one divided by 47 times 100, and that gives us 2.1%. However, the area is calculated by pi d squared over 4. 
So therefore, to find the percentage uncertainty in D squared, we double the 2.1 to get 4.2%, and so that means that we have a 4.2% uncertainty in the area as well.